Hello, I'm JW. At uh, this time we have a socket and a plug to have a look at. And uh, here's the example of it here. It's actually an Australian one. And this was sent in because there was some uh, obvious fault with it. Basically when the plug was removed, there was some loud explosion and it tripped the circuit breaker. So we've got the uh, socket here and we've also got the offending plug as well. So take this apart and see what's happened inside. So now the cat's had a good look at these, then uh, we'll have a look at them as well. So here's the socket outlet, it's a uh, double outlet there with switches. And the particular one on the right hand side is the one where the problem occurred. And we see there's a certain amount of blackening around the switch there and also the hole where the pin goes. Here's the plug, just a two pin one, obviously no uh, earth connection on this one. And again we can see the pins there, that particular one is rather blackened. And you can see some melted metal on the side there, that sort of shiny coloured part. So fairly obviously some uh, misfortune has occurred there. Here's the note that came with it. So it enclosed this plug and socket that exploded when my wife removed the plug without switching it off. And the device in question was a fan, so it should not have caused this. And that still works okay in the, that's obviously the right hand socket. And uh, my guess is that some metal parts in the socket are deformed and cause the plug pin to short the active and neutral and the circuit breaker did trip, but the RCD did not, so again, that would uh, support that theory. And again, he's put some uh, heat shrink over the plug there, so if someone did get hold of it and plugged it in, it would just uh, cause the thing to short out and disconnect. So, typical uh, Australian outlet there, and the two-pin plug. And have a look on the back, you can see it's an HPM brand, uh, made in Australia, and this is a Series 777. I uh, just got three terminals there for the uh, active or the line as it record here. Earth there and the green and neutral over there. So uh, fairly uh, straightforward thing there. Both switched on the front there, so it's got the uh, two switches there. And for some reason the back plate is upside down with respect to the front. So uh, let's just see if we can uh, open this up and take a look inside. So you would expect the damage to be on this side because that's where the black and the switch is. And even though this was pulled out without it being turned off, that should be perfectly fine because one method of disconnecting, of course, is just to remove the plug. And of course, not all that ways even have switches anyhow. So let's just undo these screws and then we'll see what's inside. So this particular one does seem to be reasonably easy to get into. A lot of the ones over here certainly are, unfortunately, welded shut permanently or riveted. So let's see... Uh, What's going to spring out? Let's try it this way. So there we've got the interior. Let's put it the uh, right way around. And then here we can see the uh, blackening up this corner here, where obviously we've got the damaged area there. So that uh, certainly isn't good. And uh, let's have a look in the base here. So the problem, of course, will be over this side. Let's go in a bit closer. So here's the insides. This side is the what you might call the normal side, which didn't have a problem. And then over here is where the actual problem has occurred. And we can see down in here that that uh, piece of metal there is basically burnt away. There's just a little tab there sticking up and the sides are missing, so it should look like the ones over here. And again, the one above it, again, you can see there's some damage here. So it appears that it's flashed over between these two parts here and uh, you would have thought there was some kind of uh, supposed to be a bit of plastic or something going across here so uh, that's definitely where the problem has occurred and it may have gone across there though that looks to be the main problem there and of course that's going to be between the line and the neutral or the active and the neutral in this case here it's an uh, Australian one so uh, presumably when the pin was pulled out it may have just lifted this conductor up somehow and then uh, got close enough to here to cause it to flash over between the two. And I so say that would what would have uh, tripped the circuit breaker. And um, we can see the resulting damage here with the blackening and uh, various sort of soot marks, as it were. And some of that has apparently escaped up here via the switch to the outside. Here's much further in, and we can definitely see on this one here the significant blackening on this terminal and the just melting on the edge of that and again this uh, rather sort of wavy edge here so that's definitely the point at which the fault occurred 
and basically has melted away some of that terminal and then that has spread up here basically over the copper conductive path and basically dissipated towards this and blackened the edge of the switch up here. So it's either the plug had got uh, stuck in here either due to some uh, mechanical failure or just sort of got pulled out of position or maybe it was overheating slightly and uh, sort of partially welded to the pin and then pulling it has caused it to uh, pull upwards, move across and then short onto the other piece over here. Here's the plug and say certainly on this pin here you can see the actual metal has been partially welded there to either the contact in the base or that sort of part of the pin here where the top has basically been pulled off and there's actually a bit of a uh, mark on the other pin as well. So uh, definitely looks as if that pin there has partially welded or at least got stuck in the actual pin there and then it was either say welded on say due to overheating or the action of pulling it out has caused the arc flash to go across and basically melt away that bottom edge. You see that's not uh, level at all there. And compared to the other one of course it's uh, pretty much flat on both of the top and bottom edges. So there's the pin uh, which was damaged. Uh, you see the obvious uh, melted metal right on the edge there. And then the other one, so it's a bit grubby but uh, nothing particularly undesirable on that one. Now just back on the uh, socket here, now you can see this contact here is actually quite loose so if the uh, plug pin had got stuck there pulling it out would have caused this to lift and then it's sort of way above where it should have been and also this one here which of course is the one that's uh, most severely damaged again that contact there certainly does move within the base so it certainly looks like it was just unfortunate that it pulled them up and then there was enough gap there for the two to make contact between each other. So we look at that uh, Australian socket there. Obviously it's been made down to a price but uh, it's not sort of terrible construction but uh, fairly typical of what you'd see in quite a lot of the sockets in the UK. Now if it had been turned off before the thing was pulled out that would have actually prevented the problem because then it would have disconnected the active from the other pin there so it wouldn't have had the arc. However the point is that they shouldn't have actually pulled out like that in the first place and even if you pull the plug out you may have then found that when you subsequently switched it on later that the uh, fault occurred anyway so definitely something has uh, come adrift in there and the same normally just uh, removing the plug is a perfectly fine thing to do but of course uh, not in this case. Now, so that was sent in but if you want to send in anything yourself then details are in the description to this video and until next time thanks for watching.